Jinx and Gunner, the brush roll edition. So first and foremost, what is a brush roll? I'm gonna pop a picture here and here so you can see a couple of ideas. Let's jump into it. We're gonna start by cutting out two pieces of 13 and 3 eighths by 22 and a half pieces of fabric. Next, we'll cut out the two pocket pieces of fabric. So one at 11 and 3 quarters by 22 and a half and one at 15 and 1 quarter by 22 and a half. If you have any special labels, now is the time to add them. So I have my brand label, Jinx and Gunner, and I'm going to attach that to the bottom corner of the outside fabric. I'm putting it here on the left, but in the future, I realize it has to go on the right. I also have a one of a kind label that I wanna stick on the top of one of the pocket pieces. So you can see I've already folded my pocket pieces in half, top down with the wrong sides together. Now is a good time to cut some fabric for our ties. I made mine one and a half inches by the width of the fabric. At the ironing board, I pressed the two raw edges in by half an inch and then folded it over again and pressed again. Make sure to do this for the entire length of your straps. Tucking the remaining raw edges in at the short ends of the strap, sew along the entire edge encasing the entire thing. You can see I've also sewn my custom brand label on, on the bottom right hand corner of the outside fabric as discussed. And also I made sure to leave room for seam allowance on either side. In addition, I have my two pocket pieces laid on top of each other, the shorter one on top of the longer one, and I basted them together along the outside edges. We're now gonna give ourselves some guidelines for stitching down the brush pockets on the small pocket only. I'm just using a clear ruler and this heat erasable Frixon pen. The width of the stitches is gonna depend on the width of the brushes that you plan to put into these pockets. So I ended up going between three quarters of an inch and half an inch. Once all my brush pockets were stitched down on the shorter pocket, I brought it over to my ironing station to iron out any remaining marks from the Frixon pen. You can see here, you can still see them, but once I give it a good press, they vanish like that. Magic. I took it back over to my cutting table and cleaned up all the raw edges since there's obviously a ton of loose threads left over from all that stitching. Of course, we don't want to leave this in there because it will just get messy and tangled and not look good. We have all the major components now, so we're getting pretty close. I have my two pockets, which are stitched together, and my ties. Though I did notice when I laid everything out, all of those stitches had actually shrunk my pocket pieces by an eighth of an inch. So I'm gonna have to trim the main backing pieces to match that. Once that's done, I'm going to sandwich the pockets and the ties in between my two main pieces, like so. And then I'm going to stitch around the entire thing, leaving a small opening where we're going to be able to turn it out in the future. I left my opening in the bottom, though in hindsight, I should have done it at the top where there's less bulk. Once you have it all sewn, clip your corners off so that it will turn out more easily. If your fabric's particularly bulky, you might want to trim down the seam allowances as well, though it's important not to trim down the seam allowances at the opening. Now it's time to birth this bag out. Do your best to flip it inside out without stretching the fabric around the opening. It kind of helps to stick your hand in there and poke your fingers into corners, but avoid the temptation to use scissors or any pointy objects as you might poke through the corners themselves. Once you have everything flipped right side out, do your best to fold the seam allowances of the opening in onto themselves, pin them, and give everything a good press. Then we're gonna sew around the perimeter and closing everything. The last step is to take another marking tool, this time I chose chalk, and mark out the stitch lines for the larger pocket. This time I'm going to be sewing across the height of the entire brush roll, so I wanna make sure that any stitch placement I have for this larger pocket overlaps a stitch that we already put in place for this shorter pocket. For my brush widths, I decided to add a larger pocket every two to three stitch lines. Once you get that second row of stitches in, all you have left to do is 
Trim any extra threads, give it a good press, wipe away any extra chalk or marking pen that you still have left on the fabric, and then fill it with brushes and take your brush roll to go. Uh, you can see I've already done all the clipping, pressing, etc. I filled it with brushes. Look how cute it looks with my little tag. Um, I use the ties to tie it up. And it's full of some brushes. So there you have it. All done and dusted. If you like this tutorial, please let me know by liking, commenting, and sharing. Uh, also, don't forget to subscribe. I'm K10, and this is Jinx and Gunner, and hopefully I'm going to have more fun videos coming your way.